Are you thinking of owning your dream homes? EGA Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms. Or our story building, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans. At our Sanyang Sea View Estate, where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, sonar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Remind him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. Alhaji Hamad N.K. Ba. Good morning, the Permanent Secretary for Ministry of Tourism and Culture, Kodu El Jabang Senghor. Good morning, the uh, Director General, uh, the Gambia Tourism and Hospitality Institute, Mr. Dauda Nyang. Good morning, the Director General, National Center for Arts and Culture, Mr. Hasum Sise, and good morning, the Director General, Gambia Tourism, the Acting Director General, Gambia Tourism Board. Good morning, the Chairman, National Center for Arts and Culture Board. Good morning, the Chairman for the Gambia Tourism and Hospitality Institute. Chairman, and uh, members, staffs, and members of the press. You are all welcome to this auspicious great occasion. It is indeed, we are all delightful from the Ministry of Tourism and Culture that we are hosting a meeting or a press conference that the Minister for Tourism and Culture will address the state. And, uh, before that, we would give Mr. Dowd Nyang to give us a welcoming remark to his facility. Mr. Nyang, you have the floor. The Honorable Minister of Tourism and Culture, the Permanent Secretary, uh, Board Chairman of National Center for Arts and Culture and the Gambia Tourism and Hospitality Institute, my colleague, Director Generals from the Gambia Tourism Board and the National Center for Arts and Culture, respectively. The media, GTHI staff, GT Board staff, NCAC staff here present. 
we would like to welcome you to the GTHI, the Gambia Tourism and Hospitality Institute. To this occasion, the press conference that our ministry has um, called for. We hope we will all learn from the press conference. And as we're gearing for the opening of the season, we, we all hope and pray that, you know, it's going to be positive all the way. On that note, I thank you all for coming. And as usual, you know, before you leave here on your way out, there's going to be the usual hospitality gesture of the GTHI. That is at the end of the event at the gate as you're going out. I thank you all. Thank you very much, Director General Dao Nyang, for that warm welcome. And uh, we will all be delighted by the time we are going down there, we will go with a little package that the bus would be very happy to take along. But this is a show for the Honorable Minister for Tourism and Culture, Mr. Hamad Ba. We wouldn't be wasting much time apart from letting him to unravel or to open the bag that he has for the country. On that note, I would like to invite the Honorable Minister for Tourism and Culture, Hamad N.K. Ba, to deliver this speech. Uh, good morning, Madam Permanent Secretary, Minister of Tourism and Culture. Good morning, the Director General, National Center for Arts and Culture. Good morning, the Acting Director General of the Gambia Tourism Board, the Director General of the Gambia Tourism Hospitality Institute, the Governing Chairman of the Governing Council of the National Center for Arts and Culture, the Chairman of the Governing Council for GTHI, the Gambia Tourism Hospitality Institute, the staff of the Ministry of Tourism, the staff of the NCAC, the staff of the GTHI, and, of course, the members of the PEST here present. Today is another historic day in the annals of our journey, in the annals of our strife in building a very strong economy of which tourism takes center stage in it. As you're aware that COVID-19 came unexpected, and indeed, it has inflicted serious damage, not only in the economy, but also in our lives, including our social, economic, and all aspects of our, survival, of, of, of our living. COVID had no boundaries. It goes beyond our imagination and unpredictable. And to today, as I speak to you, WHO cannot give you 100% of how this disease is transmitted, what happened. Every day we are learning something new about the disease. But we thank God, those of us who live in this part of the world, particularly Africa. I think some of you must have read the recent report on Africa. The prediction that Africa will be the graveyard uh, has been found to be wrong. And indeed, Africans have and are surviving COVID. And we believe that very soon, this country's economy also will start moving on. We will soon make a pronouncement, the president to open the borders, to make sure that the country goes back to normalcy, whilst we learn how to live with COVID. And I always believe that COVID is here to stay. We are here, COVID is here to stay as what cholera did. As I said, when cholera came to the Gambia, uh, Hassan, was it in 1869? Uh, when cholera came to the Gambia in 1869, the then colonial government took some measures to make sure that not the whole country was affected by this sickness and this disease. When we started working on COVID-19, we went back to the archives and we saw some of the measures that we are then engaged but, or taken up by the then colonial government. And some of those measures also helped us as a government 
to guide us in making sure that really we contain COVID. And that's why history is always here to repeat itself. But when we realized this, as a ministry, we felt that it was important to defend this sector, to protect this sector, because we are affected more than any other ministry for that matter. Because we're dealing with human beings. We're dealing with people. And these people are coming. Our source markets are overseas. And they were seriously affected. We started seeing how they were dying. And they were overwhelmed. With all their money, with all their power, this virus devastated everybody. And of course, tourism went on zero ground. And indeed, the president made a declaration on a national disaster, of course, a pandemic, declared this country a pandemic, in a state of pandemic. And that, as a result, means that tourism was on ground zero and was dead. Now, we felt as a ministry, at the time, I think two days after the declaration, my ministry summons, call on a meeting of all the stakeholders, including the Ministry of Finance, as to the way forward, before anybody started taking any decision two days after, the, after COVID was declared, we took measures to try to see what can we do to help mitigate some of the challenges that we may face in COVID and during COVID. So it is, it is, it is, It is our desire, put it back, it's somebody's food. Yeah. It is our desire to help and indeed support partners because people who are with you, when the going was good, when it goes bad, you need to really support them. On that note, let me say, I have very special thanks to the President of the Republic and the Vice President and the entire cabinet for supporting this ministry in this quest. And again, I must stand here to support to thank rather the Ministry of Finance, the Minister of Finance. The Minister of Finance stood up with all our requests, with all the efforts to support us in our quest to make sure so we supported this, 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 this industry. His permanent secretary and his staff were all with us. Again, I need to thank the National Assembly members, the Speaker, the Deputy Speaker, the minority leader, the majority leader, and the entire leadership of the National Assembly, who stood up. We were there with them sometime until 1 a.m. to make sure that at least our ministry gets a support that would help the industry to come back to normalcy. And really, with all that, I think the effort wouldn't have been succeeded without the valuable, the excellent support we got from our permanent secretary our deputy, her staff at the ministry. They work very late, very difficult circumstances, very difficult times. Sometimes tears will even be said because the job was not easy. It was difficult. I'm not a dictator, but I always want to make sure that my job is done. Come what may, it must be done. And you must accept that. We cannot survive as a government. If you go to work at 9 o'clock, you close your office at 4 o'clock. This country cannot work and succeed on that. We have to change our attitude to work and be more determined to do that. And therefore, I thank the permanent secretary, her deputy, her entire staff for going through all that hardship in bringing us to the day that we are here today. On that very note, I have to thank the, my directors with their staff, all of them. They were staying in their offices as long as we wanted them. Some of them until 8 p.m. They will be in their offices for information that we needed for something that needs to be done, and they will stay to get it done. None of them have said, ever said no to any of the requests, any of the orders that I've given. And that, I, they deserve to be thanked. And really, they have the data, they have the information. Once we wanted something, it is, it is available. And I think, really, people must believe in their country. You have to believe in your organization. You must make sure that you deliver. But if people are delivering also, they must be recognized. They must be acknowledged. They must be given the atmosphere that makes them to be able to work and deliver. I think this is key. And that's why I feel that really I am proud to say I have one of the best key. 
we are the only ministry, including the Ministry of Justice, that has attained all the NDP goals for a second year running. And that, 100 percent, and that, we couldn't have got that without the support of a very strong team that is resilient, that is willing, that is able to move and get things done. And of course, our board chairs, our board of governors, they have been working. Some of them are meeting twice a month as a governing council to make sure that things are done. We ought to change. We ought to make a difference. We are going. You people are coming up. But we want you to find a strong foundation that when you come, you have a pillar where you can stand and we move this country forward. If we don't create that atmosphere for you, if we don't make it easy for you, when you come, you will do the job that we were supposed to do for you. So it's not an easy task. It's nation building. We all have to be in it. And the more you consult, the more you dialogue, the more you get to results. So that, I believe, also in my whole life, it's always good to consult. It's always good to ask, particularly when you don't know or you want to know. So in that vein, the first thing we did, let me start. We realized that our stakeholders were having loans in the banks. They were having loans in the banks. And of course, let me give you a little bit of background of the sector. The COVID pandemic came in three and a half months into the season. There was only one and a half month left for the end of the tourist season. And then the government have paid over $60 million to some of these hotels during the period of COVID because these facilities are used for quarantine and treatment centers. Some of them will not have even earned this money on the normal season. They will not. They even use hotels that they are not licensed to operate. All that money have gone into the industry during COVID. Yet still, we have our hundreds of staff, thousands of staff who were laid off, who didn't even have the opportunity to pay their rent. Some of them were struggling to survive. Yes, if there was no COVID, we'd still be having some hotels operating and some of them moving. The, 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 the reason why it's been bad for them is because these hotels were only receiving patients who do not go out, who don't go and hire a taxi, who don't go out for a restaurant eating, who are only inside their rooms. So the staff have very little or other partners or players to benefit from this. It was only the hotels that were actually benefited. Which, of course, we accept. But our workers, our vendors, some of those who own uh, taxis, some of those who are women and men who are at, at the market, at the tourist market, some of them who own granular robot equipment hires, some of them who own hotels, some of them who own nightclubs, restaurants, gyms, some of them who own salons, some of our writers, some of our organizations, musicians. A lot of our people went out of job. They couldn't attend ceremonies because they were banned from getting to gather, gatherings. We felt it was our responsibility to make sure that we support them. Because we believe the entertainment industry is key in any nation. We believe our culture, our arts, is quite important to us. And as a government, we felt that we cannot sleep. They will all have to be supported. And if we support them, it makes a difference in their lives and the lives of many Gambians. Because each and every of these groups are employing one or two Gambians. And some of them cannot even help themselves. We even went to the extent of helping travel agencies who are not, who are not within us. We went. And you know the role we played as, as minister in getting the Minister of Information, the 15 million that was given to them, the role I played. It's visible for everybody. I'm not boasting because I felt that you should also benefit. Your institution should be supported. And I know the role I played in that. It's evident. So it is important that we support each other when times are hard. And I think that's why I felt at the time we need to take measures 
And some of these methods I'll just try to come brief because there are many, but I'll just give you a brief of it. And then, of course, we'll avail you the opportunity to have the document printed for all of you to be able to see the document. I will do that. I will give you the document that you can have a small uh, through it, look at it, share it, and then, of course, you disseminate it. And then, with the support of the one, we got $100 million to be distributed among all the players. And what I did was, you know why I got late? I was making sure that that money leaves the Ministry of Tourism immediately before I leave that office for the money to be transferred. Not one single butu will stay in that ministry. And that action was done before I left the office. <laughs> All the money. They said not even coffee and tea. I said this is not money for the ministry. It's money. That's why I came late. I sat the permanent secretary down to make sure that money leaves that ministry before I come here. That was why I, left. I came late. I would have been here at 9 o'clock. Because the money is meant for the people that it is meant for. And it must be distributed fairly. So what we did as a ministry, we took, the, we hired the consul, not hire, we, 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 we sought for the advice of an independent person who have nothing to do with anybody. I said, give us a guy, uh, how do you think we should distribute this money to everybody? He gave us a draft. I looked at it with my team, revisited it again, and then consulted our directors. When we presented it, everybody said it was the best. Because we didn't have an interest. We didn't want to be involved in it. We wanted an independent opinion to tell us. Free service. We paid him nothing. And then we wrote it down, sent it to finance. The money was transferred based on that. And these transfers will, from tomorrow, start hitting your bank account. The money, as we speak, is now in your accounts, all of you. And we make sure that from tomorrow, you start sending these monies to people. But I want to also give a little bit of advice. If you have the money, it's not meant for you to go and pay your rent areas. COVID still stays. First measure still is on. You still don't have money. This money is to help you start up your business again to help you refurbish your hotels, to help you redo yourself. Those that are supposed to train is to help you help your students, provide them with what they need, prepare your institutions to do the, what the best we expect from you. And the same thing to the NCAC. All the cultural groups, all those involved, make sure that there is no fight, make sure it is just, make sure it is fair, and everybody gets what he's supposed to get. And that I trust my team, and I know I have trust in them, and I know they will do justice to what they have been asked to do. No doubt about that. So we, we went to the banks. We engaged the Ministry of Finance. We en then through the central bank, they agreed to stop deducting interest and loan repayment for those who, owed, who are in the industry who are working, and who own loans, who own the banks. That was done. We agreed on that. And again, government also, we also championed that, paid all the rates to the municipalities for them, for all the hotel rates. That also, we succeeded in getting it done. For operational license, government also paid that money for the hotel. Some have paid, but next year, they don't pay. I think that is clear, as I told them. And of course, with the NCAC, with all the program and GTHI, with all what they've done, if I want to read it here, we'll be here till tomorrow. I have the document, and I am directing the permanent sector to make sure that this document reaches all of you. They are public information that you have a right to have and access it and verify and report as you deem fit. Now. The 100 million, listen to me, the way we're going to distribute it. We are going to give taxi drivers, 413 taxi drivers will benefit from this money. 413 taxi drivers. 
Fruit sellers, 145 of them, will benefit from this money. Juice pressers, 81 of them, registered with us. All these people are registered. They are in the formal system. Will, will benefit from that money. Hairdressers, our girls, women, who are in the TDA, in small corner here and there, once they are registered in the formal system, 76 of them will also benefit from that money. Senegambia market vendors, those who sell at the market, the women who sell there need money to go and restock their businesses. Men and women, young men who are selling there, 96 of them registered will benefit from that money. Go to market vendors, 90 of them also will benefit from that money. Cape Point craft market vendors, 78 of them will benefit from that money. Palmarima craft market vendors, 34 of them will benefit from that money. Fajara craft market vendors, 74 of them will benefit from that money. Bakau craft market vendors, 50 of them will benefit from that money. Banjul craft market vendors, 40 of them will benefit from that money. Brikama craft market vendors, 55 of them will benefit from that money. Then you have the tourist guides. Tourist guides, bird watchers, even the bird watchers, all of them, 158 of them will benefit from that money. Miscellaneous businesses, those who own Bureau de Chance, Souvenir shops, those who are selling there, who have small businesses, they all gone out of business. The 120 of them will also benefit from that money. Hotels, over 100 rooms, there are 15. They will have substantial amount of that money. Hotels, 50 to 100 rooms, there are 13. They will also have substantial amount of money from that money. Hotel, less than 50, 50 rooms, there are 23 of them. They will also benefit from that money. Guest houses, motels throughout the Gambia, from here to Basel, all of them, there are 118. They will all benefit from that money. You know, tourism has gone beyond Banjul Serekunda now. Mm -hmm. We take it throughout the Gambia. Everybody, wherever you are in the Gambia, you have to be part of it and you have to benefit it. And that's why we are moving tourism out here to go. And that's why we are building these lodges. Therefore, the lodges of country, the guest house of country, need to be supported for them to refurbish, do better, and deliver better services. Then you have up country lodges camps. The camps, 68 of them will also benefit from this money. Ground operators class A, there are six of them, they will benefit from this money. Ground operators class B, 15 of them will benefit from this money. Ground operators, uh, sorry, equipment hires, car rentals, some of my friends, the Rasta men who own one Land Rover, two Land Rover, some of the other people who own equipment hires, all of them will benefit. Yes, there are about 25 of them. They will also benefit from this money. Tourist boats, vessel, Piroc, Denton Bridge, you all know them, and other parts of the country. There are 125. They will all benefit from this money. Bars and restaurants and nightclubs in the country throughout. Those are registered with you. There are 108. They will all benefit from this money. Big bars throughout the country. There are 55. They will benefit from this money. Travel agencies. These are saying they are not meeting us. But we feel if we can help them, we'll do that. Fifteen of them will also benefit from this money. Casinos and gambling houses. They are employing Gambians. Whether you like it or not. This is not where you come for pilgrimage. If you want, you go to Rome or you go to somewhere else. <laughs> 16 of them, 16 of them will benefit from this money. The Gambia Tourism Hospital Institute, this institute, will benefit from this money to train more staff, be more well equipped, have all that you need so that our people are graduated and you start work. Institute for Travel and Tourism will also benefit from this money. Fajara Skill Development Center will benefit from this money. Takulige Skill Training Center will benefit from this money. YMCA will benefit from this money. Vicky Hairdressing Salon will benefit from this money. National Center for Arts and Culture will also benefit from this money. Uh, 
Artistic groups, 59 of them, will benefit from this money. Artistic individuals, 45 of them, will benefit from this money. Writers' Association will benefit from this money. Music Union Association will benefit from this money. Theme Producers' Association will benefit from this money. Theatre Association will benefit from this money. Book Publishers' Association will benefit from, the most, from this money. Fashion Designers' Association will benefit from this money. I think each and this will hit the entire country. Mm -hmm. Nobody will be left out. And I told them to do it with due diligence. When money comes, everybody talks. But make sure tomorrow, this, you can always account. I have no doubt about it. And that's why I said, our ministry don't want to be involved. We create it, we bring it, we give it to you. We have more on our table than dealing with financial matters of this nature. We have too much on our table. We are thinking of how to bring back the country to normalcy, how to go back to the international market, how to promote our rural domestic tourism, and how to make sure we reignite our culture. And naturally, I want to tell you, the big good news is the Gambia has been selected to be the Islamic cultural city of uh, ISISCO uh, on year 21, 22. That's the, one of the biggest achievements, and that's a huge, huge program that we'll engage. Banjul. I think it's Banjul for that matter. Ban Banjul City have been selected for that. And that's a, we have a lot of things on our plate that needs to be done. And as a result, really, we don't want to be bogged with the issue of who, uh, uh, who to disburse men to. It will take us, it will consume most of our time. But I have a team that I trust, and I have no doubt that they will deliver to the expectation of the rest of it. And I think on that note, I also want to observe one thing. There are journalists who are attached to this industry and they really promote this country. They write good things about our country. And you know, tourism is all about information, dissemination. And I think these journalists who always partner with us, I'm not dictating, but I'm only suggesting, Madam Permanent Secretary, if they can be catered uh, through uh, the Gambia Tourism Board, I don't know what you can do, but I, I would suggest that, really. Because they are always with us. Anywhere you go, they come, they are never late, and they spend time and they write good things about our country. Not because for us, but because they love their country. And I think really, you should see what you can, notwithstanding what happened with the media, but I think we should try to see what we can do with those guys. Please, huh? They are always attacked. I see them each time I go, I see them, and they are always moving around us. Yes, please, huh? Yes. That is tourism and culture journalism. Yes, exactly. Who would help this? Tourism and culture journalism. Yes, yes. I think that was an element we, we actually uh, directors, I think uh, we, 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 that must have escaped us. Am I right? Yes. Madam Permanent Secretary, that must have escaped us in our, mm. in our list. So I think you should be able to. Uh, uh, media, how do you call it? No, we are very specific, huh? Yes, very yes. specific. Yes. Tourism. You and know them, you know them. You are the marketing man. Yes. You know them. And Kasum also knows, Sir Omar knows the rest yes. of it. Yes. So, so I, 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 what happened is this information, Madam Permanent Secretary, Make sure it's given to the job because we have other things that we're going to do. Because we are leaving tomorrow for the province. I'm leaving tomorrow. So I have to move for another engagement. But I would allow you some few questions for some of you who really want a little bit of clarification here and there. I'm available, uh, Sir Omar. Uh, I will give you the opportunity to ask one or two, three questions before I move on because tomorrow I have another engagement. And I need to go and start working on that engagement immediately. Thank you. Yes. Then there will be three questions would be asked. Maybe four even. Maybe four. I try to five maximum. Yes. Maximum. Not more than five. The first questions will come. You will introduce yourself and which paper are you coming from and then you throw your question. Uh, thank you very much for um, the brief that you just gave us. My name is Mr. Taylor for Gainako Online News. Gainako. Gainako. So um, my question basically is with regards to quarantine. When people come, we understand that they should have a certificate. Mm -hmm. And if it so happens that certain individual doesn't have a certificate, a certificate or a right data, because there's a time frame for the certificate, what will happen? Will they go into quarantine? Because honorable, we heard you say that quarantine is no more. So that's the main issue. And um, you said... Let me answer that question. I think that's one question for you. Quickly. That's no, one question for you. It's, it's, it's my only chance. Okay. Huh? Yeah. You know, 
comes with you all the time. Okay. The second question, so, last one. So the second question, basically, you said um, earlier that if people are doing well, they should be recognized, and you know, you know, certainly they should be given the due. What about if people are not delivering to the level? Also, you know. You are right. That's true. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's right. Let me let me clarify something that is important. You see, COVID protocols are matters that government deals with the World WHO, World Health Organization. It is not what you want, that's what you print down. Because if you do what you want, nobody will stop people. I mean, you will make it easy. But WHO is always there to say make sure that. As long as you are a member of WHO, you do what WHO expects you to do. Now, the Gambia is on orange. And I think that's where we need the press. And we need a lot more to offer. Gambia is on orange. That means when you are on orange, they cannot book a holiday with an insurance to the country. Our biggest task now is on that. We are on orange. If you look at the WHO rating, we are on orange. And being on orange means that we are high there. You understand? And that comes because the number of people tested who are positive must be five or below. Total average must be five or below. Five yes. We are doing very well on that. It's been going down heavily. That means you have to test more people and have more negative results so that Gambia can move out of that orange to at least blue then people are free to book their holidays with insurance. Because insurance companies would usually not insure you when you are going to a country with yellow, with orange rather. So we are out orange, but yesterday, as up to yesterday, I think it's been coming down considerably. And we hope and pray that we'll intensify testing, and again, our results uh, will certainly be improving on. In the next 15 days, we hope that we'll get the level where we'll be at orange. Sorry, we'll be out of orange, and that's a positive thing. What we have also agreed on this issue, you are right. If you, are, if you have a certificate, a CRC certificate, mm -hmm. PRC certificate, you, of se less than 72 hours, you are free to come to this country. You are free to come to the Gambia without being under any, you know, quarantine, whatever, because that shows that you have the certificate. But if you don't come with a certificate, of course you'll be quarantined. Let me clarify that. The reason why WHO have to, because they also have to decide not what we want, but what they feel that that should happen. But I also want to help you on that. No aircraft, no airline rather, will board anybody without a certificate. So we are safe on that. Mm -hmm. Because before they board you on board their plane, you must come with the certificate. So that burden is not on us as a destination that we are marketing, because that certificate costs in some of them 150 euro mm -hmm. to buy, to get. Unless you have reason to be tested in most countries in Europe, they don't test you. And that if you want to come on holiday, you need to go and buy that. You need to go and pay for that and get it. That's why we are not making a condition. We leave that to the airline. You have to be strategic in the way you also put your language. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know that no airline will board you to come if you don't have a certificate. So the issue of whatever you must, we take that out. We leave that with the carrier to, to do, deal with that. What we do, what we say, is be sure when you're coming, come with the certificate. That's where we are. That also may change. That may change. We may go to a situation where you will be asked if you come, you have a rapid test, 10 minutes, you go your way. We are working on that too. We are working on that, but nothing is conclusive. We have few, two more weeks, three more weeks to go as to when we can also come, but for now, if you come with certificate, no quarantine. You go to your hotel straight away. That one, I, I, I can confirm that to you. But with no certificate, which I believe no airline will board you on board a plane without that certificate. But that's not our problem uh, as, as a country. Let's leave that to those who bring them and who carry them. Are you with me? So we are safe on that. I believe no one will risk uh, boarding uh, somebody on a plane who is not you know, with a certificate. And once you land, and the survey is less than 72 hours, then we will get you on board. But really, you need to respect that. As a country, too, and WHO also will not compromise standards in any country. They need to make sure that really the standards are respected. So, as I said, 
you know, when somebody do good, reward for the good. But when you do bad, you should be de dealt with. No doubt about that. We don't compromise that. But you know, bad thing you don't say. You only do. Yes. So, All right. Uh, yes. Uh, and, uh, get the lady, please. Yeah. Be, be fair. The next lady. Thank you so much. I am Gambia Talents. Gambia Talents. Yeah, I hope you are registered with the NCSE. Gambia Talents TV. Gambia Talents TV. 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 Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they are a media outlet. But we work with them anyway. Oh, you work with them? Yeah. They are registered? Yeah. They are registered, but they cover most of our cultural programs. So that means these are the category of people you're talking about? Those are the ones that will deserve it. Oh, go ahead. Yes, madam. Go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. We've known that the COVID-19 has affected various sectors in the country. Anna Chiamani. Okay. More especially uh, the cultural and tourism sector. Yes. Uh, but uh, all the sectors that were covered in shutdown are now I want to disagree with that before you proceed. Yeah. We have. We have provided now. We have provided. Yeah. We have released the funds. But, uh, now the money is there. Yeah, the money is there. But initially, mm. for them, they were like, the COVID-19 has affected them, and then they are not making living. Yeah. That's the reason why they And that's why government money. came in to support them. <laughs> my my, question, is, my yeah. question is, yes. why is it that the ministry didn't send any representative there? OK. That one, I must, in advance, apologize on behalf of the director. I don't know what happened, but I don't want to get into that. But let me tell you that that must have been an oversight. My apology, and I can assure you it will not happen again. Director, take note. Next. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank let you. me have Keba Mani. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mani, please. Yes, thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor. Uh, I wanted to know, because uh, this is, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, it has been announced that the season will commence next month. Yes. Carol. As a destination, whether there are plans to attract other two operators besides uh, Gambia Experience that many have said they are charging very expensive. Uh, let me tell That's you. My first question. Yes. Okay. Uh, he's a very wise man. Wise. Well, <laughs> <laughs> second one. Uh, last question. Yes. Okay. My second uh, question is I mean, uh, as far as uh, are the? What, is, what is the projection for the upcoming arrivals? Policies? Okay, thank you. Let me answer your first question. Uh, let me also acknowledge the arrival of uh, the chairman of the governing council of the Gambia Tourism Board. Uh, he just came in now. Um, um, so he was on traffic, must have held him the road. It's very difficult, particularly where he lives. It's not easy to reach out to this end. Mr. Chairman, welcome to the first one. Thank you. Now, let me answer your question, uh, 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 Mr. Mani. You know, COVID is very unpredictable. Right now, the owners, the new owners of Thomas Cook, Gambia is on top of the list for them to come. But at the moment, Europe, there is the virus have come up again. Part of Europe have, have gone into lockdown. So it is difficult for us to at this point in time to give you correct statistics as to how many two operators will come into the country during this period. But I know that there are a lot of bookings that are ongoing. People are booking in big numbers, thousands are booking to come to the Gambia. And you understand that Gambia have 40% repeater rate, which is unique. That means if you are used to a country, you must go back to that. You almost want to go back to that country. 40% of our arrivals are all repeaters. So for those who survived COVID, I have no doubt that at least out of that 
we'll be expecting maybe 25% to come to our country. But we don't expect it to pick up until around November. November and going from December, when maybe in Europe probably the virus would have gone down. And that's why this government is taking new measures to promote regional domestic tourism. The number of tourists from leaving Nigeria going outside cannot fit in the whole of West Africa if they are spread around. But we are not tapping that market. And they pay more than what your international arrivals are paying. And that's why we're going to set up office in Nigeria. The director general, uh, the director general is in the picture, and the director of marketing is aware of that. We are already working on plans how to make so that we capture Nigeria, Ghanaian, Senegalese market to make so that our tourism binded with culture together we have people to come and fill our hotels and up country lodges. And that's why we are building infrastructure throughout the country to make sure that we have at least three star hotels, lodges throughout the country. The Ministry of Tourism through the GT, sorry, the GT board, government is building four. We are not going five. We are not going to run them. We are not into running. Let me make this clear. It will be leased to people or licensed to Gambians or any other party who feels that you can run it. And luckily enough also, the Ministry of Environment through the UN Climate Change also is getting four lodges to be built. That makes it nine. And we'll be supporting private initiatives of Gambians who want to invest up country so that we can get people to come to our country, visit Nyokolokova. We have this uh, bilateral arrangement with, with our counterpart Senegalese. And then Gambians can visit uh, this tourist. Some of you have never been to Nyokolokova. I have the Gambians who are here who have never even been to Basse. So I think we really need to explore our country. And you know, countries that have got good domestic tourism se sector, we are the first to restart the business again. Some of them, 34% of their arrivals are all domestic tourism. So what we want to do, we know that our economy has not been battered. Gambians have lost a lot of revenue in the last 22 years or so. But we want to make sure that we encourage them. We build the inf in facility tap the Nigerian market, Ghanaian, or the middle class West African to come to this country on holidays. And we can succeed with our determination, with the team we have, I believe we can get it done. With your cooperation, because we will need the press also in doing that. Because you need a lot of press to accompany you in going to get this marketing done, all this program, and the rest of it. And that's why we said educate our people. Equip them with the knowledge to be able to get this done. And that's why this institute, has been graduating 400 Gambians, all of them employed, every year. And that's why we are empowering them more to be able to have more graduates. And we are helping other institutions who are training to make sure they train more Gambians to take over this industry, to make sure that we run the industry. And that's why we are supporting all these institutes as you've seen them. So it's our desire also to give, deliver quality services. And you can only deliver quality services when you have people with knowledge and skills to do that. And that's why we are making sure that we do that. And that's why we want to link tourism and culture together for people to come and do what they have to do. And that's why we are doing everything possible also to get the North Bank open up. That's why government started building roads in the North Bank to make North Bank the next tourism destination of this country. Because that's why we're building all those roads. We're getting from Bafloto to Bangali, from Bunyadu to Kuntaya, getting all those areas connected with Tar Road, and then we'll be able to make sure we build three, four-star hotels in that area. Expand tourism beyond this, this, this region. And I'm sure some investors will be willing and ready to put up, and with our with government incentive to put up these things there. So we want to develop domestic tourism. Let, and that's why this package is going across the Gambia. And I told them, everybody in this country who is part of part, who is part of culture, who is part of visual art, whatever it is, must benefit from this must benefit from this. So we, 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 but this we cannot do without the information people that you who have to sell the country. We have to, you, we, we have to partner in getting this done. Last question. Yeah. Does lady please? Identify us. Let her identify. From where? From where? Oh, yeah, I Africa TV. I yes. Africa TV. Uh, so my question is, uh, you already mentioned the institutions and the people that are going to benefit from the 100 million, but you did not tell us how the money is going to be shared amongst them, right? 
I don't want to get involved that some of them may have debts and people will follow them for debts and that money is not to pay debts. <laughs> so that question is answered. Last question. Move question. No, within Senegal, Gambia border is not open. I had this country from Senegal. Yeah, well, you see, let me tell you, uh, I don't want to get involved in that, but officially, as far as we are concerned, our border is closed and will be officially open very soon. Last question from Yunus Sari. Yes. Mr. Yunus. Yunus, please. Yunus, come in. Come on board, Yunus. <laughs> Quickly, we, we, we close. Yes. Would that matter? Two okay, give them three questions. Yeah, two, three. Yeah, okay. huh? two or three more. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, you just go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to the minister and the team for securing the money for the tourism and cultural industry. Uh, a little bit, you talked about uh, the borders, you talked about the airport and everything. We know that every, the airport is supposed to open next month, but now we are hearing that it's opening by the ending of uh, October. That is one. Number two, uh, we are still in the cold orange, and some of our tourists also get from their own country, they are still in cold orange as well. And uh, we want to go to yellow, we want to go to cold yellow, so that tourists can come. Blue, blue. Yes. So, uh, what are you still doing with the Ministry of uh, Health to see that uh, they improve uh, at least some of the regulations? And the mandatory uh, regulation that we are expecting from the ministry. And number two, I will a little bit go back to the date from what we have been saying here. I want to talk about the security level fee, the levy at the airport. <laughs> so, in 2018, uh, you fought for this and uh, it was cancelled. So, you want to do any? Let, let, me, let me help you. Again? Let me help you so that we don't waste time. Uh, if there is anything that stops me sleeping and eating well, it's anything that would stop tourists from coming to this country and visit us. That's just what I want to stop on that issue. I don't want to elaborate further. You understand what I'm saying? If there is anything that stops me eating and sleep now, it's anything that would stop people visiting this country as tourists or that would make it difficult for them. Mm -hmm. Let me stop that. I don't want to elaborate. I know what I'm doing and I know what I'm up to for that. With regards to the issue of uh, compliance, I think we have to appeal to our, our Gambians, fellow citizens. If you look at the statistics this morning of the Ministry of Health, out of the 100 persons who died, 60 of them are below 40. That means among you, the youths. It's a very disturbing figure. Below 40, that's a very disturbing figure. Because usually in Europe, it's affecting people with 80 whatever. But here, the statistic is saying the young people are dying of COVID. And that means we need to take precautions. We need to really do our mask. For me, mask is principal to anything else. And then, uh, how to call it again? The sanitizer. Sanitizer. Really, for me, that's, that's number one. Social distance can happen. But when you have your mask and you are using your, your, your distings, I think then you can be safe. But I always have a question, and nobody answered my question. You know what my question is? COVID can come through here. Okay? Through your nose. Through your mouth. What about your ear? <laughs> Who tells me that COVID cannot go through here? And they are not mentioning our ears. No, tell me. They said the virus can come to you through here. And here, what about here? And they're not talking about that. They told us why some months ago that when somebody died of COVID, uh, the person can contaminate. Now that story again changed. So you see, what I believe is what, they, what WHO is telling us, let's respect that. But as you said, Yunus, we need to do more testing and then bring our, that, uh, that orange down so that really we can be in the good books of the whole world. And only testing can do it. Because when we are having these big numbers, if we are there, we were testing. Now you want to come down and the percentage must be five or below. That means you need to come do a lot more testing and be having more negative figures to remove that five, to get to that five and the orange goes off. 
unless we do that, we will still be on, 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 on orange. And that will still threaten the industry in the next few months to come. And you know that over 200,000 people benefit, you know, in form of employment with its industry. So we need to work and submit ourselves voluntarily. Voluntarily. Now we have got a lot of testing centers. We are improving them. I think by next week, they will be everywhere you go, any day you want, you can be tested. And we are working on a, on the, on a quicker results too. So that we try to make so the next two weeks, let's do a lot of testing. We have a lot of uh, negative reports. And then now it brings down our, our, our orange out and makes this country look better for people to be able to visit it uh, with that. So that's that last question now. No, last question, uh, comes second to last. Yes, my brother. Yes. Yes. So until this minute, until this minute, we only stop at a deep science. So what is um, what is holding the copyright law in in a second place? Thank you. Very good question, Sasum. I'll give you that answer. I have it, but I'll ask you to answer it because I've signed this into regulation since one year plus. Tell them why. Come and say it. Albatu ayah of ada fang, dengan jenis ayat betul. Nak koru di jenis apa? Wah lelu tak? Well, thank you very much. In fact, um, like, like a lot of effort has um been taken since 2018. Like, I remember I said um, when the regulations you know were signed after almost four years. You know we are registering. I mean, I mean works now. Um, you know, thanks to our minister also. I mean, with the budget increase. You know, finally the corporate office has staff. As we speak, we have three staff you know, who are registered in you know, works. And also the EU has now intervened um, to help us you know, to actualize and operationalize the, you know, the collecting society of the Gambia, you know, which is the mechanism that will collect you know, royalties for Gambian artists. You know, last Saturday, I mean, the consultant came and he worked with Sir Omar and a cross-section you know, of Gambian artists. I mean, I mean, I mean, so you know, that is a new development with the intervention of the European Union. Um, through a project um, in which the Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry is the lead partner, and NCC is also a partner with the Gambian artists. So there is good news on that front, I mean, also. Thank you. You got your answer? No. Thank you. I gave them more money to get it done. I wanted him to say it. Yes. Through the budget, the permanent secretary, for, through the Ministry of Finance, so that they get more money to make this thing happen. And that's what he is confirming now. Uh, Last question. Yeah. Yes, uh, last question. Yes, uh, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, we all know that uh, COVID-19 has uh, you know, hardly hit the Gambian economy, and then Gambia is a tax based country, as you all know. And then uh, the GRA has projected that we, are about, we will lose about $1 billion in terms of revenue. And then we know that tourism is one sector that brings a lot of revenue to the state, and then tourism was hardest hit by COVID, and then it was zero, and then agriculture was not also uh, very well. So then one would want that. Thank you very much. I think you have asked a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, let me first of all say that to get to this 100 million, I wanted 26 million dollars for the industry to revamp it. That's what we wanted. But I got two million dollars. You know why I didn't cry much? Because I know that the economy, the money is not there. And that's why I started with this. This is not the end of the fight, as I said. And I told parliamentarians, we'll be going there to fight for more. Because marketing is very expensive. Getting back to people, and where we are going, people have millions of dollars with them. If you go with zero money, all what you use is your experience and your strategy, your knowledge, to get people, the fight become more and more difficult for you. But notwithstanding that, we are ready to, change, to, to face the challenge. 
to make sure we get there, we fight to get back our, our, our share of the market. But we have a committed government and a committed leadership to tourism. And the president never wavered when it comes to the issue of job creation, tourism, culture, that it was something that government must provide this money. Because we insisted that the money has to come and the sector must be supported. And that's why everybody stood up, including parliament stood up, to say that we have to take this money not from anywhere, it's our own money. It is not money borrowed from anywhere. It is the Gambian people's money that we are giving back to Gambians who have been putting a lot of money into the state coffers, as you have mentioned. You know, the sector has certainly suffered. You are no doubt about that. But I think uh, gradually we all understand. We went through hard time. When hard time come, everybody suffers. But I think with this small intervention, we will see something coming up. And we intend to do more fight to see wherever we can secure anything extra, we'll have to pump it again. And that's for us is key. Now, the other question is about the assessment. The assessment, you are right. I was very upset with the UNDV assessment. I even wanted to stop it. Because there were people who were left out that I felt I don't understand how they were left out. Some companies that were left out, I didn't understand how they were left out. But then the order, I was advised that if you stop it, it will have to cancel completely. And I don't want that to happen. Because people were already hoping on this. They were already hoping on this. If I had stopped it, uh, it would be difficult. I asked them to go and make another assessment to cover everybody. They said it would take another two, three months if we have to do that. Then I was obliged, you know, to get it go. Uh, but this one now, the one here down here, nobody is left out. No one is left out. We make sure that the tourism board lives with all its partners to get the perfect data. No one will stand to say, even the, I did not mention the bumpers, but the tourist guides, the tourist guides I call are all on board this list. I don't want to use the word bumpers because they are not official for us. Yeah. But the tourist guides, they are official. All those names who are here, all of them will benefit. No doubt about that. With this assessment, this is, this I make sure that everybody, everyone is on board. No one will be left. It's an legal entity. Yes. So, and I think with this also, I want to encourage people. When you have a business, however small it is, go and register it. You know, even if you don't pay tax, go and register. If you ask about 10, go and pay one dollar tax. Go and register your business. Be part of the formal sector. I think it's important. All of you should learn that. You understand what I'm saying? No matter what, how small it is, be ready to be part of the system. But here there are people that he, he, he even included. They have not registered because we want them to learn from there. Tomorrow they will know that they should go and register. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I don't want anybody to be left out in this, in this, in this package. You know, so we really believe that not everybody, but the few that are with us who are working and probably couldn't have done it this year, but did it last year, we've captured them. We've registered them. Those who have visited last year and this year could not renew, they still ca captured part of this because of COVID. So that's what I'm trying. Not people who are outside, who are not part of the industry. No, no. They are not the people I'm talking about. Let me clarify that point. So that everybody would come and say, I, will, I also have a restaurant in Birkama, or I have a Birkama bar restaurant. No, 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 no. no. It's not that way. Please. Uh, last question. Kewa, again, please. No, no that yes. was the last question. No, give Kewa one more. Yes. Give Kewa. I wanted to know. Now that come here, answer that question. We are even creating new, new dishes for Gambia. Now that come and answer that question. Let him answer the question. Yeah, now that answer the question. What is, what is the question again? Repeat your question. Let him hear it. What are the plans as far as the uh, local gastronomy is concerned to make it more organized and more Gambian? Yes, more Gambian and more affluent. So maybe selling it as a product to. Okay. Last year, for the first time uh, of the history of this institute, we, we set up a research unit, and we did this in collaboration with the chef associations of the Gambia. I mean, within the unit, we developed four new menus, all from local dishes, and about eight new beverages that are all local, different from your fizzy drinks. And really, we've been working last season, our chefs here, 
and the chef association to start piloting it and testing it in the hotel. That is one way of, of doing it. But the other area that there is a big shortage in the industry is on pastry. Now, you know that um, if you want to do a good pastry, everything is imported from the flour and all the other ingredients. But this year, as, as part of our development budget request, for the first time in the history of the Institute, we want to build the first pastry and bread production center. Meaning, instead of using imported flour, let me also use this opportunity to announce that GTHI is also finalizing a project on food pro uh, processing and packaging center. It's going to be on the other side. Now, the flour that we're going to make there is going to be from corn by our farmers, kus. And it's the same flour that we're hoping to use for, for the production of the pastry and the bread in the, in the new building of, of pastry. So we are a training institution. We have chefs here that have the capacity, but we have to work with the Gambia Chef Association to make sure that it gets to the hotel and the other outlets. Thank you, Dad. Go ahead. Star TV, One Star. Last Where is Star, Star TV? TV? Star TV. Where are they? Star TV, yes. Yes, ask. Okay, um, thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, Michael Sergi, uh, what mechanisms do you have for the bomb site? Because the report has indicated that 70% of the tourism, the dissatisfaction they have comes from this bomb site. And secondly, um, since the COVID Very good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was not visible. They got not even a dime. They were left empty-handed during that government. Mm -hmm. three, in, three issues came. They never received a dime. COVID is not for Minister of Tourism. It's for Minister of Health and WHO. We don't have the mandate. Dissemination of information about COVID is strictly WHO and Minister of Health. We only do what they ask us to do. We say what they ask us to say. And uh, let me just tell you one thing. The issue of bombs has, I've lived it all my life. I came to realize that it's a social issue. It's a social issue in the sense that I've done a lot of work research into bombsas. When people, when you have 100 bombsas this year, when at the end of the season 50 of them would have gone to Europe, next year you have 200. <laughs> it never ends. What I came to realize is it's a social issue that should be addressed. Lack of jobs, some of them dropped out, out of school, they don't have means of paying their school fees, they don't have parents to help them. And I think that's where we should address it. We should address it before they go to the bombsters. That's what I believe now. And I think many of my colleagues are becoming convinced that bombsing is a social issue that needs to be addressed at different levels. You don't find degree holders or people of high education doing that there. You don't. You only find people who are dropout, mostly, who don't have even support from parents and the rest of it, who are usually there. And I think we need to approach it through that means. It's a social issue that we have to approach and address it at that level. That's what I believe. Not going, beating them, locking them up. It's not the solution. I have come to that conclusion. Not about the number of police who goes there or whatever. That's not the issue. I think the issue is we should address it socially to minimize it. You can also stop it, but you can minimize it. You have countries where you are caught bombing is death sentence. But we will pray never to be that, that, I mean, those countries. We just believe that we can manage it. But it's difficult. But I know that tourist guides will benefit from this money. No doubt about it. And also, let me clarify. The UNDP uh, thing was meant for the informal sector. You understand what I'm saying? They were targeting mostly the informal sector. And us here, as a ministry, as a government, we target our partners, our players in the formal sector who are dealing with us at every level. And that, for me, I think is fair to all of them. And that's why I encourage people, whatever you do, even if you are selling sand, 
or whatever, go and register yourself to the institution or the ministry or department where you're supposed to be. Because it helps you tomorrow for people to be able to have the statistic data to support and, 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 and help and assist. So I think I would encourage people to really register. And I think now the travel agents are registering with you. You see? So I think it's important we do that. Yes. With the last question? Yeah, that's it. No, give him last and then we close. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Um, we are grateful that you are giving us the chance. Um, my question is regarding the fact that we are about to open this tourism bar. And what is the latest on GT board? Is there going to be a revival of the board? What's the latest with the board? That was the GT board is intact. All their staff are reporting back on the 5th of next month. The governing council is constituted, operating. They even met yesterday. The director general, acting director general, Mr. Abubakar, is doing a fantastic job. All the staff are re-energized, revigorated, with zeal to move and deliver it. <laughs> Okay, I have a new board. It's my decision to it's my decision to compose a board. It is my decision to dissolve a board. Honorable, thank you very much. On behalf of the Ministry of Tourism and Culture, we would like to say thank you to all of you. The permanent secretary, Ministry of Tourism and Culture, is delighted for the wonderful turnout and we are very grateful. Thank you to you all. When we touch down, but I broke down. Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. Lipolo hanrek lui taral jigen la ci yoyu rek lañoo dox 
skincare product e muñ ci gambia rek ñu nga united states ñu ngi gambia fi ba paré bu dé yaangi anywhere in europe mun nañ la ko mail within 3 days rek ñetti fan rek nga jot say diw e muñ ci lool rek dañ la consult tamit ba lañ la jaay diw dinañ def a free consultation pour wax la rek exactly li nga xamné mo mengo ak sa kanam dinañ len wax tamit né rek am nañ perfumes you know fragrances men shirts um accessories we do do dresses as well we do blouses i mean we do shoes name it we do them skincare plus 2020 is our year of perfection zero task fim nek ni rew mi fe ken mo do fi fe task ken mo do fi am problem kanam ken mo do fi am problem picha boko am do fi fek ni rek ñew lo ci place bi fi Gambia <laughs> 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 56 branches mola soda Gambia ja ha ka Gambia kono ani Gambia bantala bankol ko kono ki ya bere hmm? ko do si fa si fa fo falindiro fo nyadi lafta meme men na ko di to poto nim ko di maro jannam number one di nyonta hmm. andum fana nata anoda enterprise soda le wolam nyin di ko domorol fana kol fana be firale le da di ma ni domorol di fana be teat ha Gambia daw da yalo ma fum fa kendol soda le di ha e wo moyo di ha apelenta ni wo ka ni na lafta nyela kendo le binaji yalo bu kanila ko la baraka ba yalo ndel chosa no la baraka